What's up, everybody? We back with another episode of the Mic'd Up Students Podcast, Padden. Season Four, Episode Eight. Episode Eight. I'm the home, as you may know. I'm Malachi. And we got a good one today. A good one for you know some new prospective students that are joining us or are thinking about joining Sac State. And mm-hmm. I think this episode is something that will be very helpful for you know a new student that maybe had their freshmen's some first semester last semester and trying to branch is out is now trying to you know they they got the grades and stuff under under their belt now they're trying to just branch out and do or, some things or even if you've already been at Sac State for a minute you know what I'm saying and you could just uh you know there's just different things that you can you know different little things that you may not have known about or anything yeah. like that shoot I'm gonna be real I was in Sac State for a minute before I knew about a lot of these things yeah me too you know, we're about uh, to uh I even worked for the school for a while and still didn't know about a lot of the things. So, it's, um, about to learn y'all. About you know, to learn y'all something. You don't want to leave college with any regrets. Yeah, so you know, not. just try it once. If you don't like it, so be it. Move on to the next thing. But yeah, absolutely. let's start with you know a few ways that you can get involved here on campus. At so Sac State. Y- so yeah, that's this is what we're talking about. We're talking about it's different ways that you can get involved um, here at Sac State. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I mean, we could. What do you want to start with? Uh, student government. Okay, so we student have government. ASI here on campus which is our student government organization, Associated Students Incorporated, and they're located in a, a few union. places on campus. Well, they have ASI. Um, you're talking about K- their, their... So they have their office in yeah, the union, yes. right? But there's also Peak Adventures um, those are that's things in that the union. Those are things that they're over. Parts of ASI. Yes, but if you're, if you're talking about like... Just ASI. Yes, if you want to well, go the find ASI. Offices, ASI. Yeah, that's, yeah. In, that's in the union. On that's in the union. Second, third floor? Third. Third floor. Engagement's on the first floor, student government's on the third floor. Okay, see, that's what I was... That's what I was... There's like... Engagement yeah. is where KSSU is, correct? Correct. Right. So if you're involved in wanting to be in, you know, the politics of student government, mm-hmm. go to the third floor and you'll be able to reach out to any of your current ASI representatives and they can get you information on how to get involved there. You know, they do a multitude of things and if you're someone in the realm of like political science maybe, mm-hmm. that can be a route that would be super helpful. You get to meet a lot of people and we're in the capital. Capital yeah. of California. Absolutely. They have, so it's it's kind of the, it's kind of run the way, I mean, I don't know if you guys' high schools have those, but like the student body elections and stuff like that. So yeah, It's official. The, yeah. So Very the official. ASI president, we actually just um, had one, an election, so for a new president, Salma, yeah, she is the new ASI um, student body president. So, yeah. and you pay for it in your tuition as well. So, ASI, it's part of your tuition. So definitely take advantage of all the things that they, um, you know, offer. Student, you know, government is just one of them. So, so the other one I would say, um, one that I just recently used, but didn't use, is Peak Adventures. Oh. Let me tell you a little bit about my Peak Adventures. I've experience. never done. So Peak Adventures, Peak Adventures does a multitude of things they have travel trips that you can go on where they take you to the snow for the day they have hiking trips backpacking trips snowshoeing um i heard they're going to utah uh mm. in may and you're going to be able to see like the red rocks and the sediments and things and there's like a river there so they, they do all kinds of trips and they have stuff for very very low prices very student friendly prices so for new year's eve we uh went on a trip to the snow for mm. my friend's birthday and it was my first time ever being in the snow. Yeah, I've never been to the snow before. I'm sorry. I thought you went just, beforehand. No, never been to the snow before. Um, so <laughs> this was my first snow trip, and we we're going to go snowboarding. He likes to snowboard. So it's like nine of us. We all pretty much rented our gear from um, Peak Adventures, and I got a helmet, I got a board, boots, pretty much everything you need to snowboard except gloves and um, goggles for 45 bucks. Simple. And it was a loophole that they will tell you about uh, when you go. Is So I did it, um, you know, they close over winter break for a certain period of time. So on the 22nd, I went and picked up my board and my boots. And since they were closed, since Peak Adventures was closed from the 23rd through the 3rd of January, mm-hmm. they didn't charge you for any of those days in between. So mm-hmm. I paid that $45 a day fee. I paid for one day yeah. because they were closed all the rest of the days. Yeah. So if I was like an avid snowboarder, if any of you are like avid snowboarders or snow skiers, whatever the case may be, you <laughs> whatever the word is. I've been once, man, yeah, and I'm about to get to that experience. But oh God. Um, if you're one of those people and you enjoy those activities, you can go to Peak Adventures and get you know really good deals on those kinds of trips. And they, they have a shuttle that takes people literally to the snow and back. Mm-hmm. So it'll leave at like 7 a.m., come back at 5 p.m. So you're, you know, you don't have to worry about transportation. You don't have to worry about renting a car, which we should have did. But, you know, all these different things, mm-hmm. um, you don't really have to worry about if you do those trips to them. So Peak Adventures is awesome. 
You know what's crazy that I just thought about because you said you went to the snow. And this, this is so off topic, but I just thought about it. <laughs> it's super off topic. But, like, okay, the snow is actually really cold. I know, I know, I know. That's obvious. We all know that. It's, you do it's, it it's every episode. Just, just hold on. Just, like just, 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 just hold on. Me. Just continue. hold on. Just Go hold ahead. on. The snow is really cold, right? But in movies, they don't act like it's cold. And I understand that they may not always be in the snow movie. Sometimes it may be fake snow. But you see snow. And oh, I want to go to the snow. Da da da. But the first time I went to the snow, I was like, wow, this is super unpleasant. It's extremely, cold. it's extremely cold. <laughs> but like, you'll see people in movies with. No gloves on. They're walking around. You don't have a little hat, maybe the most, but that's about it. In the Santa Claus movie, when uh, uh when uh, Santa in Claus the North Pole. No, 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 no. I'm not even talking about the North Pole. In when he's when he's at his house, Scott comes at his house, and the Santa Claus, you know, he Santa Claus, he falls off the roof and stuff like that, and he just woke up. Tim Allen goes outside in his drawers with no no shoes on, no socks, and in my head, I'm thinking like I'm as I was watching it older. I'm like, dude, it's like what twenty maybe degrees outside. Yeah. But you know, just walking around, chilling. Oh, yeah, I just thought about that. The snow is actually quite unpleasant because it's, I just—it's cold, and I think it's colder if you're not in it every day. I was—if you live in if you live in Russia, a, if you live in Russia per se, you develop it's cold all it. the time, yeah, yeah. most of the time, and it's like bitter, painful cold. Yeah, see, so you get you develop a tolerance for you know. It. Yeah. So now you can do certain things. I don't know about going outside in your drawers yeah. uh, when it's I went twenty to degrees. I went to the Enchant Sacramento. I'm just gonna tell y'all right What's now. What's that? If, if it, so, it's like a think of it. It's like a little. It's like a little Christmas experience. So they have like a big Chris. It's really a photo op type thing, really. So like there's like a maze in the middle where you can take a bunch of. How pictures. much was it? It's way too much. How much? Was I'm it? not even gonna say the price. No, I want to know no, the no, price. No, no, no. I it think was, the people deserve to know the price. It was way, look. All I'm gonna tell y'all is this: Do not go. <laughs> no. Do, do not but waste tell your them money. Why though? How much was it? Because, hold on. I'll, 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 I might get to that. Okay. But here, here's why you should not go to this. And I know we're getting super off topic, but we'll, we'll circle back. But I just need to inform y'all because this, I was, I was extremely livid after this experience. So it's like Christmas in the park. You ever been there, San Jose? No, I've never been there. But oh. I think I think it's supposed to be like that. So there's like okay. they call it a village. It's in it's in a it's in a baseball stadium. <laughs> and so they have, you know, the River Cat Stadium. The, right? Yeah. They have all the, 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 the little cocoa shops and stuff like that on the right. village. So here's what here's here's what got me mad, right? I was wearing uh I had shorts on and then I had jeans on underneath or on top of those. And then I had Uggs on and then I had a hoodie and then a jean jacket on top of that. I was mad I didn't bring my beanie and I should have. But I was freezing. My toes were gonna fall off. I wow. kid, you, I kid you not. I was, I saw people there walking around with iced cocktails. I saw some dude. Okay, but that's not so. The fact that it, it was cold that day that you went to Enchant is more of like a you problem than an Enchant problem. No, no, no. Okay, well, no, that that's not. I'm not talking about that. In okay, so what's wrong with Enchant? Hold on, I'm not done with why I was why <laughs> what what added to my lividness. Go so ahead. I was I was freezing and I was already mad because I was waiting in line for an hour and a half. To go ice skating for five minutes, so that was one of the reasons why I was why I was irritated. And then just wa- looking at other people in absolutely nothing. Some pe- some women had crop tops on. This dude had a tank top and shorts and sandals. I was about to lose my top. I was like, "There's no way he's out here, like it's the dead of summer." But anyway, so that contributed to me. So I, anyway, so I paid I paid heck of money to get into this thing. How much was it? It was way too much. It was way too much. But thing is, the thing is, though, is that I was like, okay, you know, it's just a nice little Christmassy experience, you know what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. It was way too crowded. We were like, people were like this close everywhere. Like, there's no space to get anywhere except yeah. for like the maze, maybe. And Did then, y'all just take group pictures? No, no. It, it was and airdrop them to each other? That essentially what it is. And then, and then, like I said, there's the maze, and that's about it. There's j- cocktails and stuff. The food was heck expensive there. It was like $20 for. How much was it to get in? A way too much money. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that because I'm not saying that it was way too much money. It was way too much money. Anyway, I paid for two tickets, but it was way too much money. Those two tickets in general were way too much. But the point is, do not waste your money there. That's all I'm going to say. So anyway, back to what Peak Adventures. So some other things in ASI. So we said food. Pa- uh, uh, the f- government. The food pantry. So the Cal Fresh. No. no? What is it? It's just the food pantry. The ASI food pantry. Okay, yeah. ASI food pantry. So that is. In the the uh, the union on that side, so like if you're walking towards the uh, observatory, the like the big science building, you walk kind of d- towards that side. It's like a little off ramp, and then you can go into there, and you can go pick up 
grocery. I think they have groceries. They have um, uh, cereal, like non-perishables and stuff like that that you can go and get. And I know they were giving away food. Sometimes they'll even do. Um, remember what they had in the um, in the library quad where they were getting out chili? Yeah, they mm. t- they do chili. That's um, pop up pantries. pantries and things. Yeah. So, you know, if you're ever hungry and you just can't, because I think they get they get and even yeah, the pop up pantries they'll literally give students food away for free. Um, yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's all yeah. free, right yeah, in the pantry. It's all free. Let's talk about Unique. Uh, Sac State Unique is in the union. It is a program, um, an area, a group of people that throw events. Mm-hmm. They throw all types of events. They throw concerts uh, in the middle of the union. In, in the middle of the week, sometimes you'll smell the popcorn when walking into the yep. union. Yep. And that'll be you know, kind of a sign to know that someone's performing or something's going on. They'll have um, I think concerts, games. Wasn't her here one time? Her came. Yeah, hers here. No, I know it was a. It was somebody. LMA. Did. LMA. LMA. LMA came. LMA Kiana came. Lede came this yeah. semester. This last semester. Mm-hmm. Um. So they do put on some pretty cool shows, and they're affordable in terms of concert tickets. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen SZA's concert tickets. No, I no. Oh my god! Anyone who's a fan of SZA <laughs> knows. <laughs> oh my god! She just dropped the album, and you know her concert tickets are like six hundred dollars for nosebleeds. It's insane. That's so there great. won't be any of that in any of the <laughs> events that <laughs> Unique throws. They'll be affordable. Funny. Um, tickets that you'll be able to see some of your favorite artists. So, KSS, uh, so Unique is in the union. Then we have KSSU, which is also a part of ASI. Yep. But KSSU is it's a radio station. station. It's an online radio station, live radio. Um, I don't know how often they're playing. I think it depends on the hours. I think their hours are longer than the than um, mm-hmm. ASI's typical hours of eight to five. Mm-hmm. But I also think that after a certain time, they put the tape in, like the you know, like any radio station. After a certain point in time, they just Put kind of put a tape in, um, but on. if you're interested in broadcasting, if you're interested in, if you're any kind of comms major or athletic area, or if you're just a musician or into music, you can host your or own. Or even if you're just interested, yeah. Just even if you just want to have a, a live podcast where they, you know, it'll be recorded and aired. KSSU is a great option to join, and from what I remember, I almost joined KSSU prior to the Mike of Students podcast. Is I think, um, you know, you have to submit a cover letter and a resume. And you interview, and then if you get past the interview, there's a few requirements that they have as far as community service. And in that, you can learn how to be a DJ, like an actual DJ. They have their own set of turntables and things. So you can actually DJ some events for different departments on campus, get a name out that way. But also, if you just want to host your show, whether it be an hour, two hours, a week, you know, you can you can make that happen. So KSSU is on the first floor. If you're walking into the union from the library quad. Yeah, it's directly across from the police station. Um the police stop in the union. You can go to KSSU. There's also the uh, ASI Children's Center. That is, how do you describe it? So if you're at the union parking lot, it's like. Right next to it. Yeah, it's right. It's the building right next to it. Yeah. I, I know that's a horrible <laughs> explanation yeah. on where it is, but that's the best. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know if. For, so for and, and that goes for two separate populations of people i think if you're looking to get a job yeah and you're maybe doing child development or if you're in children's anything in the area of children mm-hmm. um, or if you just love kids and want a job you know you can yeah. go to the children's center and look to be a job as one you know one of the daycare providers or um student assistants in there um also <laughs> fun fact a third of the campus population has a dependent yeah so um you know a third of the campus population either has a child or someone that is depending on them so we are also, um, you know, our th- the amount of money that our children's center is uh, receiving is, is pretty substantial. Mm-hmm. So if you have a child and may not know where, you know, to take them for, um, you know, child care services, reach out to anyone in that area. You can just look up Sac State ASI Children's Center, just Sac State Children's Center, mm-hmm. get a lot of information on that. So if you need um, help with child care, you know, that's a great resource too. Absolutely. I used to, um, and it's crazy that I actually never even bothered to go over there because so. For those of you who may not know, I used to work with kids for four years, I believe. Yeah, I worked with kids for four years. Um, first graders to middle school. But, um, but yeah, so, I mean, it would it, definitely be, like, even somebody like me, you know, who doesn't really work with kids that much anymore. But, you know, I still I still like kids. I'm pretty good with kids. So, I was like, you know, let me go. I still never went over there, which I probably should have, um, just to kind of, you know, check it out and whatnot. But. Yeah, it's definitely a good option, you know, if you are a child development major, like you said, or yeah. if you are interested in, you know, you know, having a job where you do work with kids and say it could be a, a really good kind of transitional type 
avenue, if if that's word, or even if you just need, you know, a place to drop your kid off. Absolutely. And so speaking of getting a job, that leads me into the next thing. One of the main things I think is super important and integral into, you know, if you really want to immerse yourself in this campus and, and your college experience is getting a job on campus. Um, and the first thing I want to say to preface this conversation is when you apply for FAFSA every academic year, there's a box in there that says, do you want to be um, work study? Yeah, eligible for work study, considered for work study. Are you interested in work study? Whatever it is, something work study. Something, something with the words work Whether study. Whether you want a job or not in that moment, check that box. Yes. Because there are a lot of positions on campus, you know, and, you know, for budgetary reasons, they may not be able to hire. They can students. only hire you based yeah. off of if you have. When, so, hold on. So, explain what work study actually means. Well, work study is a, um, it is a program in which the federal government will fund um, semester, salary. yeah, your salary for a semester. So basically it's it's more for the university side. Some people, some students get it uh, mixed up with, they think that work study just means that that's money that they get to have. Yeah. But that's, the, that's money that you need to work for and earn. It's money that you'll get to earn per semester. Yes. So let's say I'm a student intern in our office, right, and I'm a receptionist and I have work study. $4,500 work study, right, mm -hmm. per semester. That means that for that semester, as I'm working, all my money will get paid from that work study fund, and that department won't have to take that hit when it comes to, um, you know, maintaining student assistance. Yes. So there are a lot of departments on campus who will, you know, if you look at ha Handshake or anything like that, it'll say FWS, Federal Work Study. Like, only apply, we're only hiring Federal Work Study. Yes. That means they want students who are eligible for that and can earn that. So I would suggest even if you're maybe not even thinking about having just a job on check campus. It anyway. It doesn't do you any Just harm. check the box. It, it, it'll be, um, if you're eligible, it'll show up in your um, award, your financial aid award that you can either accept or decline. And um, and uh, kind of kind of like what he says, some people are, so I, I wasn't eligible for work study. So mm -hmm. there are some people who are eligible, some people aren't. That doesn't mean you're not ever going to be able to get a job on campus. That's not the case. Um, but it definitely does work in your favor if you do decide to get a job because just like he said, some departments, they would prefer to have somebody who works on uh, work study because then that money that you get paid from wouldn't have to come from that specific department. They can use that department money for other areas and stuff like that. Yeah, but getting a job on campus is – the beauty of it is, you know, there's so many different departments. There's so many different areas mm -hmm. that you never know what you can find a job in. There are, exactly. you know, jobs that range from – um, being a peer health educator, there yep. are jobs that range from being an ac um, like student advisor and academic advising, working in the student services center. I say, yeah, you could be you at know, the front desk in the union. You could be at the front desk in the union. You could be at um, receptionist in a There's in really a honestly a job office. for everybody. To be real, like there, there's a job for everybody. For your major, for exactly. your interests, whatever it is that you're looking for. And one of the cool things is. You now, once you get a job on campus, you, you're connecting with all these different people exactly. that are also, you know, that may be working in the industry that you want to work in. Exactly. And so now those connections become your connections, depending on how you network and how you choose to expand your knowledge in that area. You can make a lot of great connections and, and maybe even, you know, get yourself a job uh, in the real, I don't want to say real world, but in your career field later on, you know, you can meet people that will help you. And you'll be able to attend all kind of professional development um, events and things so uh, it'll be really like helpful it'll be really helpful to get a job on campus yeah. if you have any questions about getting a job on campus you can reach out to us as well and we can point you in the direction of where you can go to um, I forgot to find applications the, and apply what's the name because there's a name I, 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 uh, what is the name of it it's like the name of the I don't want to say the company but kind of the the um, it's like what they use to give handshake? no 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 it's not handshake UEI, there it is. That's what it is. But yeah, because th that's what I saw when I literally first got to campus. I just heard a bunch of about UEI. I'm yeah. like, okay, well. But yeah, so that's how, those are different ways that, you know, that you could get. And also, so you never know. So you might know somebody who works in a department on campus who can, you know, oh, we need X person for this, you know what I'm saying, you know, just apply or whatever the case may be. And that could be a job right there. Another great thing, um, what's kind of difficult about getting a job in an area that you may be interested in would be that you may not have experience. A lot of the jobs on campus don't require you to have prior experience. They understand your students, obviously. They understand that you may be looking for an entry-level 
um, kind yeah. of way into the industry that you're searching for. So they're a lot more understanding with experience. They're a lot more understanding with training and they work with you. So, you know, don't was, be afraid to look for a job on campus. I was going to say too, and I know we're kind of hounding this, but to kind of, if you don't have anything else to say, to kind of wrap up yeah. this area, it's actually, I don't want to say preferred, but it does work in your benefit to work on campus because every single person, if you work on campus, your employers understand that you are a student. So if you, you know, if you're like, hey, I got class at X time, okay, you're all good, right? You know what I'm saying? They understand that, okay, you're, you're obviously here because you're a student. Mm-hmm. So um, they're more than willing to work with your schedule, um, you know what I'm saying? And, and in terms of, like, it's very, very flexible. I know at most jobs say, oh, we're flexible, we're flexible, but this is probably the definition of a flexible job Yeah, um, working on campus. So It's one of the only places you can work in the morning, go to class, come back to work, and, exactly. you know, kind of really base it around what your class schedule is. If you have a three-hour gap, you can, you know, work during that three-hour gap exactly. and then go to class. Um, it's really useful uh, to be able to do that. The flexibility is awesome. Absolutely. And plus, just like you said, through the connections that you get, like you may work for somebody who knows somebody in a department who knows, you know what I mean? Like you, you just, you never know what working on that or working in that area could help you. And so, but I'm not going to hound it any longer. You know what I'm saying? Just if you can apply for work study, get a job on campus. Yeah. That's One thing we didn't cover ASI, just quick back to it was aquatic center. Oh yeah, that's all that the way is, though. I've never been. So so I went for my orientation. Yeah, I skipped that day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think you only went if you stayed the night. Yeah, I did, I didn't yeah. stay the night. But um but it's like it's it's not on campus. It's like a low ways 15, away. Fifteen miles. You said Weber? Lake Tacoma, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah something so. like that. Um it's actually not bad. So like when we went Oh, that was a while ago. I actually don't remember what we did. All I remember is putting a life, ja- life, uh, life jacket on. I think they have a lot of water games. They have boat rentals God, and things that do? you can do. Rentals. Yeah, there's rentals. It's, I think we it's did kind like of canoeing or something with a canoe. I just remember putting a life jacket on and then getting wet. At a lake. At a lake. Okay. Yeah. They ha- I think oh, they ha- volleyball. You got wet playing volleyball? No, no, no. I mean, there was that. <laughs> what do we eat, bro? You ate? Yeah, we ate food. I think they gave us like hot Okay, but how about you think that in your mind while I speak? Because you're cutting me off to say nothing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it was hot dogs. I think okay, made, like, all right. You had a hot dog. Wonderful. This this was this was for, for like the freshman orientation night type thing. But it's, it's not a, like on an everyday basis. You just eat hot dogs and chips. Like I'm pretty sure you can get what you want. I just don't remember exactly what we did. I'm trying to – okay, no, we played like water games – Okay, right, it'll come back to me. Anyway, go ahead. I think the aquatic center is a great place for you to go to do water activities. Um, you can swim there. You can put do boat rentals. You can take classes. Boat rentals. Lessons. That's what it was. I, that's what it was. Yeah. No, I just said that. I just said that. I said it already. I said a canoe. I right? said it already. No, no, no. I, I said we were on a canoe. I right? know, but I. Okay, then never mind. Ignore what I just said. Go ahead. No, my fault. My fault. Yes, the aquatic center is about fifteen to twenty miles away, so it's a little bit of a trip. So if you do decide to go, definitely do research on their web page. Uh, if there's anything that you need to reserve beforehand, I would do that online before, prior to going. And, you know, invite your friends. Go in a big group. Because we took a bus when we went. Big of a tri- That's yeah. the first time I met Daphne. That's cool. Yeah, it was, it was actually really funny. I, we were, as we were getting on the bus, yeah, he walked up to me. He was like, you want to sit next to each other? And I'm like, sure, whatever. And just like that, just like sort that, of man. spurred a friendship. Spurred See, friendship, you, can, you, you can create <laughs> friends. <laughs> I don't know that you. There's buses that just go to the aquatic center, but you you never know. You might meet someone there that becomes a lifelong friend. Yeah, you never know. You never know. Yeah. Next, and this this you know I love. I know you love to talk Malachi, and sometimes who said I you love irk to talk? me? You know you do. I don't. Um, I wouldn't. I don't love. Sometimes to talk. you irk me, but this realm, I'm gonna sit out. Okay, this one's gonna oh. be all you. It's Greek life. Greek life is something that is prevalent on campus. Um, yes. In the first week or so. Of each semester, you'll have rush week where you'll see all the different Greek organizations out on campus mm-hmm. promoting their organization, wanting you to join, and providing information um, about that experience. Malachi, please lead the way. I, I am not personally <laughs> a Greek the way. organization. Let them know what organization you are a part so of. I can okay. what they stand for. Yeah, okay, I don't need to do all that. I, okay, I will. So I'll speak. You do on need to go do all that. That's what the point of this. You tell them how to get involved, how you got involved, Absolutely. and why you got involved. So I can speak on my organization. I'm part, uh, I'm a part of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, Blue Phi. Um, but I don't, I can't speak for every org or every Greek um, organization on campus. Now, for the most part, 
for the most part, I guess, you know, every organization, it's like a club. Think of it like that, right? So, like, the that's in simpler ter- in simplest terms, uh, it's like a club. Now, our so so my, my fraternity, we're a part of the National Panhellenic Council, and that's that's our organization is recognized on a more national on a national scale. And now again, I'm not saying the other or, the other frats and sororities aren't, but I just know at least for us, we're recognized. Uh, we have national headquarters and things like that, so it's a little bit more than a club. Um, but um, but yeah, no, definitely Greek life is something that definitely um, that you can you know get involved in. Um, you know, you meet new people, obviously. Uh, you know the connections that you can make and stuff like that. Um, plus, I mean, at least for me, you know, I've been in different states and whatnot where I've met some of my frat brothers, and even I mean, I have, I have sorority sisters because I'm a, a sigma. Um, but you know, I've met them. And I don't even know who they are, but you know, it's just, it's just kind of, it's just like an unspoken type of relationship. Like, okay, you frat, so you know, this is what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Greek life is definitely something to get involved in if you are thinking about it. Um, why why research. should someone get in why should someone that is interested in a Greek organization join? What are the S- positives? So uh, again, so I can speak for my organization and my council. So in the D9, um all the organizations we kind of we're we're all historically black fraternities and sororities. So we are a little bit unique in kind of the things that we do. So we, you know, we do community service obviously. We're that's our core principles and whatnot, you know, serving the community and helping people and, you know, scholarship and, and things like that. But we also step and stroll, um, which is, I guess, in short, and I hate to use this phrase, but in short, it's a it's a dance. And I don't even like to say that. Cause that it's a dance? I, I, hate, I hate. Why I don't hate you like to say because, that it's a because, dance? Because that's what other, oh, do your, do your little dance. And then that would kind of <laughs> irritate me. I'm like, it's not a dance. But um, I mean, to someone who's yeah, not to someone privy, who doesn't know, yeah, it no, it looks it, like a dance. It, I mean, it technically, <sighs> it, I, is, no, it t- is it not, not technically not, a dance? It's not. It's not a dance. Ah, I don't want to say that. Ah, it's not a dance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's bothering you say that. But anyway, but I just want to understand why. Why what? Why is because it's not a dance. It's like a. It's a choreographed. Sure, it's choreographed it, sure, body it, okay, movements. Okay, yes, it is choreographed, but it's not really like ah. I mean, I get, <laughs> ah ah. I don't want to call it a dance. I don't want to call it a dance. Because ah. <laughs> it's like a stroll, like it, yeah. It's so a stroll. So strolls are strolls are to music. Strolls, I guess, you consider more of like a dance. You could throw that kind of in the dance realm. Steps, not really. That's more of like that kind of dates back to like old African traditions and um, you know like. I don't even like saying this either, but what? hand boning. It's a tradition. Hand boning. Hand boning. You you heard that when people would yeah, yeah. do all that. Mm-hmm. I hate that phrase, but that's kind of what. Yeah, it's it's something that's historic. Similar. And yeah. Each organization has their own st- steps and strolls. Stroll, yes. Um. But that anyway. But that's so that's something that our that the D nine does that's unique to, you know, the other uh, frats and sororities. So that's kind of one thing that you know initially attracts people to the organization. Like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, the but performance aspect. Yes, the performance aspect. Um, but you guys also re- throw events. Yes, I was gonna say, but kind of beyond that, um, it at least me being a part of my organization, it definitely taught me like life skills, leadership, time management, um, and and even just I, again, just kind of just just I don't want to say skills, but just kind of just characters as a man, you know, like sticking to your word, you know, like kind of just sticking through certain things, right? If you know something may be hard to do, oh well, you got to get it done. Work work now play later you know just certain characteristics just you know you know that different yeah there it is personal development right um and that's one thing that i can kind of attribute to uh me being in my organization and you know growing up since my dad is also in the same organization you know those things kind of just roll what's that called what is what you know you and your dad are both in it is there like a phrase for that oh yes uh legacy so I am a the I'm Powell a, legacy. Yes, yes, I'm a legacy. <laughs> Sigma. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, but, man. You know, it is cool. It is cool. My dad's but, not. Um, my dad's from Africa. But see, that's another thing too, because part dad of didn't do the Greek organizations. He, my dad actually lived in Greece. Oh, that's dope. For like seven years. That's actually dope. In Athens, he could see the Acropolis from his apartment. Pretty cool. So it was lit up at night. 
But no, no Greek organization. <laughs> 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 not, not for me. You know, again, he speaks so it's, Greek. He knows the Greek alphabet very well because yeah. he speaks Greek. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 not Greek for everybody. Food. He like, eats Greek food. Do y'all like have Greek food at all? No, we just no. eat you know whatever we want to eat. No, oh. yeah, I just it's, thought that was cool. It's it's not for everybody. I mean, I do know the Greek alphabet. Yes, what's the Greek uh, alphabet? Can you say it? Um, yes, I I can say. Can you say the Greek alphabet? I don't want to. Why not? Uh, so the oh you my know gosh. the the um you're no fun, dude. I know it sucks. You know we want you. I want you to be uh, the model Greek figure for the Mike Up Students podcast. I am not really though. I am Greek. Look right here. See Phi Beta Sigma. There it is. But they couldn't see that until I said something. You know what I'm saying? They already knew. I just they didn't said, know. I just said no. I mean, they knew just now. But, but anyway, was, you know. um, in terms of Greek life, to kind of just kind of um, wrap it up, it's not for you. Don't have to join a Greek organization. No. It's not for everybody. It does cost. Um, yes, yeah, some organizations you are required to pay dues in order to stay a member. Um, that's it's usually either semesterly or yearly costs. Yes, that's not the case with our organizations. Um, you know, once you are, you know, inducted, I guess is the word, into your organization, you are a member for life. So, yeah. But um, but anyway, so yeah, but no, definitely, if you are interested, you know, do your research on you know any Greek organization. Um, talk to his members, whoever's on the campus um, at the time. Um, you know, and just see if you know what they s- what their organization stands for lines up with kind of what you know you hold as a person. Uh, that's why I chose Sigma. Aside from kind of my dad being Greek and the people that I knew, uh, kind of just what Phi Beta Sigma stands for is like okay, you know, I I can rock with that. You know, what I'm saying like this is it's it already kind of em- ex- uh, em- what's the word um, em- emplif- exemplifies. No, 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 exemplifies it. It already exemplifies the stuff that I already do. So. Yeah, but yeah, that's a way. Uh, Greek life. Yeah, um, Greek life. Back to me talking. RA slash being an RA slash, slash DA. DA. Resident so DA is is desk attendant. I know that. Yes. What's RA Resident stand advisor, for? Advisor, I believe. I know what they do, but yes. I just the the R word was resident um, resident advisor. Off. You are those two in the residence halls. Yes, in the res halls. In the residence halls. Yes. So in the residence halls, the desk attendant typically is the person who sits. At the front desk of each of the res halls, I'm sure you're assigned to one. Uh, typically, n- no. How do you switch around? Um, from my understanding, you do. So. Well, it depends because sometimes it, it it depends. But for the most part, you're either assigned or sometimes you can switch in terms of desks. Yeah. For RAs, you usually assigned to uh, a hall floor too, right? Typically yeah, a floor. hall or floor. But for the most part, desk attendants, they'll they'll bounce around. So in terms of responsibility, yes. vastly different. Yes, 100%. Desk attendants, they're, you that's answer that, questions. That's why they're two different jobs. You answer questions. You take phone calls. You help students if they're locked out of the room and things like that. A resident advisor is in charge of an, an entire floor. Yes. For the most think, part. Think of it like after hours, relations. Right? Yeah, that's Obviously the during s- school business hours, um, there are full-time employees and staff that are there for those kinds of situations. But – after hours, if you live in the residence halls and you have a question, pretty You're much only going to be able to talk to your RA, right? So they're trained um, throughout the summer. If you are interested in being an RA, it's a summer um, program that you have to go through. You obviously have to apply to be an RA, mm-hmm. and I think it's a pretty competitive um, field as well. So, because yeah. um, there's so yeah, it's it's there's certain benefits too. So for an RA, you get free housing and food. I think it depends. Um, no, 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 that's what it is. No, it depends. If you are an RA in the Hornet Commons, it's oh not, yeah, it's not if because I forgot the Hornet Commons, that's also campus partner. So if you're, if you're in the North Hornet Village, Commons, yeah, if you're North in North Village, Village then it's what I just say. Um, Housing is covered is. as yeah. well as food, so that is one two of the major benefits of it. Um, if you are a DA, you get paid. Yes, hourly wage. Yes. Um, so there you, is you know, some overlap too with RAs also being DA. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so you can be an RA and a, and a DA. DA. That doesn't necessarily cross over. If you get hired as a DA, you won't automatically be exactly. an RA. But you'll most likely some you'll from most part see RAs as DAs because it's just it's pretty. And I think I think I think if you are an RA and you decide to be a DA, I could be wrong, but I think that you then get assigned to a building for a DA oh. because if you're already an RA for that building, they're not going to go and move you to different building to be a, a DA. Yeah, a building makes sense. But I think it's a cool. Position to um, get to know people, you know. Absolutely. As, a, as an as a DA, you're seeing 
you know, hundreds of people on a daily basis. You have to communicate and talk get, to people. You have to time. communicate. You're probably going to make a lot of friends as an RA. Same kind of thing. You also get to host events with other RAs. There's the RHA um, where they that? meet together. That's the Resident Hall Advisor Association something. Housing Association? Resident Housing there Association, I believe, where RAs and students get together and talk about different things, uh, you know, about campus life and living mm-hmm. in North For Village. Events. Yeah, yeah. There's events on that, that they throw, that they host. RAs can host events in your halls. Um, you get to meet people. You get to meet and get to know everyone on that floor, pretty yeah, much. So. Absolutely. Um, it's a great way to get to know other students. And uh, you never know. Like, like I said, life is networking. Absolutely. You know, a lot of the times a job is not what you what, what you, you know, know, but who you know. You know. So um, getting to know people and, and expanding your knowledge of your jobs, your careers, and, and who else is in the same like mind is great because it's always great to have a team, you know. And, and the more you meet, the more people you meet, the more you'll be able to sift through and figure out who you want to um, enjoy life with. So, yeah, and RADA, I was, yeah, I was wonderful say, options. Just because I know you, know you didn't say in the dorms, but um, there's, there's residence halls. Sorry, in the residence halls. Um, but when I was when I so it so uh, and she's she's she graduated a while ago. But her name is Tamara. She's like a big sister to me. Um, and when I I didn't even really first meet her, my parents saw her. She's like, oh, she's the only black girl in the front office. So they introduced herself, and I didn't even know who she was until I came down for the first time to ask for something. Um, and then she's like, oh, you're Malachi. And I'm like, oh my god, I just got here. I just, <laughs> I just got here. What are you talking about? Oh, you're Malachi. But then. You know, it became great friends. You know, Tamara, she helped uh, oil up my head when I had them braids in because oh, that's oh, nice. it was so itchy. You had them for like a day, though, two I days. I three days, and I took them <laughs> things out. Oh, I took them out. I was beating my head day and night. Oh, it was way too itchy. But, <laughs> yeah. But, no, she she definitely. But, like, I She came that, to the rescue as Yeah, she came right. to the rescue. When I would, I'd be hungry, I'm like, hey, Tamara, I need some food. She would go and take me to go to in and out or something but she was just like that's why she's just r- for real like a really big sister and i'm really proud of her too she's in la with the stars she's and doing amazing things shout out to tamara if you do get to yeah, see this if you do real. follow the page she is like a um publicist for yeah the bmf the show yeah. a lot of the different she used, players she did the sparks the show. i think too la yeah sparks. yeah the la sparks she was working for she's doing amazing things and she was an ra for yeah. pretty i think almost four years so yeah she met a lot of people and, and made a lot of connections i'm not attributing attributing any of that to her success but She's doing great things. Shout out to Tamara. Shout out to Tamara. Yeah. If you are an RA, spotlight. Be like Tamara. Yeah. Be that's, like. that's the impact that you can make on Exactly. People. Yeah. When I say be like Tamara, I, exactly what I'm saying. I have, have an impact on people, right? So, I mean, she'll forever be one of the closest people. You know, I always got love for her. So, I mean, you know, but that's why you become, you know, a DA or RA. You know what I'm saying? It's not just to go and, I mean, obviously, you don't want to get your check, but, you know what I'm saying? If you can make an impact on somebody. Absolutely. Dude, Being what else we got? What else you got? Anybody seen that from the office? No. Oh, dang. Yes, you have. You saw the. I've office. seen every episode, but it's you hard for me that, to remember certain remember things. That. So remember when Andy and they're in the dance during the later the, seasons? Yeah. Those are no, the foggiest with, to with, me. With um, uh, what is her Michael. name? Michael. No, 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 no. So it was Andy. What was her name? Oh, I can't remember her name. But she was one of the new, the new um. I think she was a new receptionist. But anything past what season did he leave? Four, five? No, nah, no. Nah. I think he left season six. six. Anything after that? Or it may be, it might have been five. I probably watched it once. God, what was her when name? When Michael left, it's like ah, you yeah, know, Michael ah. left. It's kind, of, kind of upsetting. Ah. What else you got? That was funny. That was funny. They were in a dance. Do it again. They were in a dance competition. Do it again. Hold on. They were in. I'm give backstory. They were in a dance competition, and um, and Andy he was trying to do some dance move. I cannot remember her name. Can bro, you do the bro, dance look, move? Look her up. I can't. I here. Look her up, bro. Look, 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 look up her name because it's gonna bother me now. Why are you asking me to look up her name? Okay, here. I'm just gonna do it real quick. But anyway, <laughs> they were in. They were in the room. So it was like it was like the little alternate room that they had made because they were trying to have like a little dance party. Um, um, hold on. What else? While you he got? looks that up, another thing: li- living office. in the residence halls is another great way to get involved on campus because they throw a lot of events for. Residence. Aaron, that's her name. Aaron, got it. Anyway, so Aaron, right during the room in the little other room dancing, and Andy's trying to do a move, and then she's like, "What else you got?" <clears throat> she came to my mind when uh when you said that. All right. So, so yeah, living as a student in the residence hall is another way to great to be very involved on campus because they throw a lot of events. They throw movie watching events. They throw. Events in that quad kind of area amongst the, the, oh, the RA. Thing? Yeah, no, not RA. Just being living in 
resident sauce. You know, if you were listening and paying attention. I was trying to figure more. out what, what the chick's name was. Okay. It's Aaron. It's Aaron Michael. Great. Yeah. Michael look Michael went like this. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh so yeah, living it's just as a student in the residence hall is another great way to meet people, make friends, um, get involved in events and, and, and do a lot of things. Plus it's also really convenient as far Facts. as transportation. Facts. And and I, I know we're talking 10 about ten minutes before my class yeah. started. Yeah. And, and you know still you making it. on time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Absolutely, it was a, or it is a an ex- unforgettable experience for most people. Whatever. Um, you get to meet a lot of friends that you can hold and, and keep on to through the rest of your college experience and past that even. Facts. Um, so yeah, if you have the opportunity to live in the residence halls, if it's something that you are on the fence about doing, but you do know, it for sure. Maybe a little nervous. Do it. So and, and so and the, and the thing about it is, is like. I know, so so I was kind of like I was like, bro, this is stupid. When I first was when I first was gonna move into the, the residence halls, I was kind of I was like, bro, I do not want to do this. But I can wholeheartedly say that living in the re- living in the residence hall is probably one of the best experiences I had of my freshman and sophomore. I lived in my, I lived there my freshman and sophomore years, hands down, probably one of the best. Let me tell you, experiences my of experience. my college. I didn't live in the residence hall. Yes, we know this. Right, uh, there was another campus partner that I don't think the uh, university owns anymore. No loss. The Upper East Side Lofts is where I stayed, right? And in, you got to understand, in my head, I didn't know anybody from my, nobody from my high school class came to this school, right? So I didn't know anybody. So I had a, I had two options. I could stay in the residence halls and live with you know one to two random people in very very close quarters, mm-hmm. and then share bathrooms and not have a kitchen, or I could live in the lofts, have two other people, but the lofts was like it was weird because. There's no, it's a loft, but it's not a loft. Yeah, I don't know what like, I don't know what that means, but okay. What a loft is? No, or no, no what no, a I, loft, but not a loft. Yeah, means. I don't know what that means. So it was a loft because there was no rooms except for the bathroom, and the laundry was in one room as well. Okay. But it wasn't a loft because typical lofts, like you know, it's usually a one person you know place that you live in, and your bed will be like separated to a point where there's a difference in area in the apartment. So like downstairs is the you know, living area, then you have like a separated kind of kitchen. It may not be walled or sectioned off, but it's separated. And then there's usually stairs or something that takes you up to where the bed is. Mm-hmm. It's not like that there. It wasn't like that there at all. It was so like bed right here, bed right here, and then another bed on the other side of the apartment, like across from the kitchen. So, so it was, it was like, like a dorm, essentially. It's basically oh. what it was. It's essentially a residence hall. Pretty much, but bigger. There was a, a full kitchen in there with a full fridge yeah. and a living area with a couch, a chair, and a TV that it came with. Right? Okay, that's solid. So in my head, I'm thinking either I live with two random people in a very small room and don't get any of that, and you don't get a laundromat in your thing that's free to keep running. You don't have to pay bills. All that extra stuff was always included. Or I could do that same thing in a bigger space with two random people. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit of a walk to campus, but still a walk. I didn't have a car freshman year up here. So. I didn't have a car either. So, but I just so I decided car, to do the right. lofts, and I had you know one of my roommates, Jonathan, hella cool. He uh, lives in Japan now. He's an English teacher, really dope, a big dope. fan. Other roommate, mm. <laughs> 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 not pleasant, man. Listen, it was a, you, it was probably one of the worst roommate experiences I've ever had in my entire life. If you, there are, was only one perk, what? and I, I, you know, if he sees it, he sees it. I've voiced my expressions. He worked at McDonald's. He was a manager, so he used to bring free McDonald's sometimes. And obviously, I loved McDonald's, especially when it was free food to a freshman college student. I didn't have any problems. But he was uncleanly. He was Listen, yeah, just uncleanly you, all around. You, That's the term. If you're going to room. There was a scent. With, Sorry. Yeah, see, I don't There like was that. a scent. Once you. Like, so there's. It was a big Sense. room. It was like a thousand square feet. Like, it was a big, like, apartment, basically. Mm-hmm. But. You know, when you walk in the door, it's my bed to the left on this side of the wall. And we're kind of separated. Like, there's like 10 feet, 15 feet in between us. Um, but once you got past a certain point in the room, the scent just took over. And it was just. <laughs> That's like just, a threshold. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, it was ungodly. Like, it was it was a vile scent that <laughs> That's was awful, man. And he also burned a few of my uh, pans. What? He How burned a few of my pans. Like, I was nice. I let him use some of my pans to cook things. And he just. Tore him up, oh, oh, man. Oh, I thought you said pants. No, no, pans. Like pots and pans, yeah. not pants. He didn't burn my pants. I was going to say, that's... that's. I mean, it's potential, too, charges. if my stuff was in the... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> At that point. <laughs> I'm, I'm present. Um, but th- what was... My thing is, if I had, you know, 
some good roommates like my second year third year and i lived there it would have been no problem actually would have been fun yeah um because i had in unit laundry washer dryer unlimited had a bathroom to my to ourselves you know there was a living room with a tv and a couch and there was a full kitchen so and i like to cook so it was all positives for me except i had just one bad apple in there that just kind of i had a random it. roommate he, you had the same i had no yes, I had malachi's <laughs> is the funniest <laughs> because malachi had a random roommate his freshman year and then somehow got placed in the same room with as that same, same person the next year and didn't pick him to be in that nope. room. I went in to go and pick where I was living for my sophomore year. I'm like, bet, but I have a new roommate. I go in, and there's only one option. <laughs> and I'm like, hold on. <laughs> I even flipped the I even flipped the screen around. I'm like, is this right? Like, why? Why is this the only option? Same roommate. <laughs> and I'm like, this has to be a joke. This has to be a joke. I wonder if he requested me. It's possible. But I didn't approve that. <laughs> so how are you just going to place me in a spot that I <laughs> that I didn't even approve? <laughs> like, how's that going to work? But I, regardless, <laughs> though, I still had some of the best times uh, in uh, Riverview and AMC. It was really fun. You know what I mean? Because you know what it is? It's, it's like, at least for me, because I didn't have a car either. So I was in the residence halls, and I didn't have a car. So it was, it was just fending for themselves. So, I mean, I was... We bought scooters and we were scooting around. It was it was a, it was just a fun little a fun little experience. But yeah, I never did so much walking in my life other than that freshman year of college. Because <laughs> not only did I have to walk to campus every day for class, and I had class on Fridays freshman year, right? I had to Crazy. walk to campus every day, be on there all day, pretty much. Come home during like big gaps. Anyone that knows that walk, like the walk from Lassen to the Upper East Side Lofts, is like a thirty minute, thirty five minute walk. <laughs> Because like, obviously that's it's not that's short. On, uh, what's it called? 65th, isn't it? Yeah. Across from yeah. the 7-Eleven. Yeah. It is a long walk, man. And that's then I worked tough. at Trader Joe's. So I had to walk to Trader Joe's, which is like a mile and a half down the road. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. You, you, could I, be, you could be the one to tell your kids, I walked. No, bad. <laughs> bad. Not even just that. I worked closing shifts then because I was new there. I transferred, but I was still new there. Yeah. So I worked closing shifts. So I'm getting off at 11 mm. and walking like an hour, I'm walking slow because I just got off eight hours of work after school. So I'm walking hella slow home in rain, sleet, snow. Okay, see, okay, see that's doing that. I would have called a lift. What you mean? I would have called a lift. Sometimes you don't got money if for it. If it's raining, you working a job. Yeah. You got bills. If you got bills. I, I shoot. Mm, I'll man. find some. I'll, scrounge, hey. I'll scrounge something around for but $10 those add lift. up, though. You know what I'm saying? If it's the seven days of rain that week. Did you use your free bus pass? Can you get the. The bus doesn't run down that oh. street. Oh. If you are a Sac State student, you have a free bus pass. But you have to go pick it up. You have to go pick it up. It's a, it's a sleeve, and they change the colors every year. It's a commuter sleeve. Or every semester, yeah. You could use the bus and the light rail with it. Yeah. Oh. You just show them You just show them your, your thing. So you, you put your one card into your into the sleeve. You just you know show them the mm-hmm. thing with the sleeve, in it, and then you get in for free. Get I used free. to use that freshman year, too, to get my hair cut. I actually never used the bus. I used to take two buses and a light rail to get to the bar. <laughs> Hey, in El Grove, do do. wow. In El Grove. Okay, see, why yeah. would you go all the way to El Grove? That's hey, that you know how hard it is to find a trusted yeah. barber. Yeah, and it was one of my friends that I met. His cousin was cutting hair yeah. in a shop out there, and so made that I connection and kind of went there. You know, I went to JD, JD on oh, Monroe, I believe, Monroe Street. But yeah, I went to a lot. JD. That was like a four or five hour experience <laughs> getting get my haircut. Cut. But it was cool though because I got to ride the light rail and I got to ride you know two buses. Um, so it was uh, interesting. You know, on Apple Maps, you can, like, search something and use public transit to get there. So yep. it gave me that route, right. which is cool. So, yeah, that's a, another perk as a student is you can yeah. – you can even if you're a freshman and you live in the residence halls, you know, there's a bunch of buses that leave that circle right across from the res halls. Um, so you can, you know, go explore Sacramento. Absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah, so I know we kind of rambling a little bit, but for the most part. I yeah, I walked in the bit. rain, man. All right, see, look, the we're sleep, not about to do the snow. Do, I, we're not about to do all No, that. but I did, though. Like, it was real. So. It was real. Like, I was really doing it. And now I'll get up for class, and it was just like a whole experience. And, and I understand. Like, my dad used to say stuff like, yeah, I used to walk seven miles at six years old to go to the store to get bread and come back with money. I, I can say the same story. I used to walk, you know, to class. 35 minutes, do a mile of walking on campus, then get back. That's another couple miles. So it's like two and a half miles. Now I got work for eight hours, like, you know what I'm saying? Slave ship type thing. So getting on the, you know, 
get on the sidewalk and walk in. And then now it's like 11, 11.30. I got to walk back. I get back home. I got to eat. I just did eight hours of work. You know what I'm saying? I'm hungry. I got to eat. So now I'm, I'm fixing food. I'm about food. to turn your mic off in a second. Come on, bro. I'm fixing food now. I'm about to turn your mic off. Nah, but it's, it's real, though. It's real, though. Why are you I'm hating? I'm about to turn this mic off in a second. Now I'm fixing food. I'm so food. sorry. It's like midnight. I'm so sorry for your service. Thank you for your service. I'm not done. Thank you, you know for saying? your service. Is that what you want me to say? Now I got to do homework. I'm about to turn and then I got an 8 a.m. math 24 class. That's insane. So, um, I know we're rambling a lot. I, I didn't have the luxury that you had. Why you turn my mic off? I hope uh, that you. I guys didn't have the luxury that you had, man. I didn't get to, you know, what I'm saying, get up ten minutes before class, roll out of bed. Ah, now I'm in class, Ugh, still yawning. Nah, I had to be up, man. Crack of dawn, real stuff. Rooster, roosters roosting. I had to really get up and and get after it. You know what I'm saying? Every day, every day. I'm so proud of you. I I needed an hour to get ready to change to make sure I did my assignment and then walked pretty much thirty minutes to class. Like that's really, you know, what I'm saying. That's not to knock nobody else's so, muscle, but that's just, you feel me? That's um, what I, had I know to go he through. went on for his monologue. That's what I had to go for through. For forever. But anyway, for the most part, I hope y'all got um, a good understanding or a gist of kind of the And then I had ways. to cook, for if real. Because I couldn't talking, get bro. into the, I didn't have a DC. I hope y'all, um, See, you know, are able to get a few. Don't take, the DC my, don't was a take my microphone. Can, don't do that. DC is a place that you can go. <laughs> hey, can nobody hear you? Hey, you're, you're, you're cut off. The D.C. is a place that you could go and get food and stuff. You didn't have to cook it. You didn't have to prep it or nothing. Go buy the groceries or nothing. You just had it at your earliest convenience. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Obviously, I didn't have that same luxury. You know what I'm saying? Every once in a while, I get to make. Are you done? Are you done? He's, he Damn. really is like some stranger guy on the bus. <laughs> no, <laughs> really, just tell it like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell my story. That's the whole point of this podcast. It's, man. it's done. To- Look, you, 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 you done told it. We Come know. On, man. Everyone, I want y'all to drop it in the comments. Thank you, Nahome, for your service. Uh, actually, I feel like that's what you want. But who did I serve, though? I don't know. You but said, you're telling me like like, like you done did. You. I'm just doing what my dad did for me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm very, um, I commend you for it. Anyway, no, I hope y'all no, able to get some information from the episode. Uh, just different ways that you guys can get involved on campus. Um, jobs, RAs, Greek life, ASI, all of that. Um, definitely do your research. You know, do whatever fits yeah. you and your schedule. Obviously, you know, if you have a very impacted um, major or if you just have a lot of other things going on, again, just pick what you can do. If you can't do anything, you can't do anything. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, but we're just kind of giving you all some ideas and tips and stuff for things that you can do on campus. Um, I know those are kind of the main questions that people are like, what is there to do? Um, so, well, we have some things to do. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's all I got. Good uh, job, dude. What? what okay. <laughs> Okay. That was tight. Um, that was good. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, hey, you killed it. I ain't got nothing to say. Thanks for listening. Episode 8, Season 4. In the books. In the books. We got a lot more in store. Ah, you see that? Huh? Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Playboy from the Bay Boy. Nope. Maybe not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a car. <laughs> so, tune in for the next episode. We have something wonderful in store. Um. Yeah, till next time. Who knows? It may be a collaborative effort. Till next time. Yeah. We're doing Hot Wings next. Oh, yeah. It's not. Yeah, never oh, mind. Yeah. We're doing that. Actually, let's hint at that. It's going to get spicy. Oh, God. The next episode going to be spicy. I like you spicy. You good with spice? I like spicy food. I don't like overly spicy food. Well, and I don't like spicy food that has no flavor. Well, we're going to have fun. So It's uh, going to be fun because I don't think it's going to be This might be uncomfortable for me. I'm it's going to be a lot of spice. Honest. It's going to be a little flavor. <laughs> But uh, it'll be fun. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Till next time. Absolutely.